Once the diagnosis is made, the first approach is feeding. Is that correct? Make sure the kid correct. Can feeding be fed. is the number one problem. And okay. Once you establish that, depending on the extent of the problem, the team approach, which we've discussed, will decide at what stages, at what times, certain things will be done. So if an ideal case came to you, had a cleft lip and a cleft palate, the logical approach would be when would you close the lip, when would you close the palate, and an ideal case. Okay. In an ideal case, um, you're going to want to close the lip at about 10 weeks of age. Um, because surgical risk of a 10 week older is not so bad. Well, that that's a good question. You know, why 10 weeks? And it's, it's 10 weeks if you ask any surgeon, uh, it's the rule of tens, um, which one, is, one answer is that it's 10 weeks of age, hemoglobin, uh, the blood values are at a certain level all around. And um, the answer is that at about 10 weeks, they're out of that very acute risk of a newborn, like you said, anesthetic wise. They're also a little healthier, they're stronger, they can eat a little better, so if they, if, if for one day they don't eat that fast or eat that well after surgery, they've got some strength in reserve. Um, so if, if, you closed, up, if you closed then, doesn't mean you may not get another surgery in there, there might be a plastic procedure sometimes later down the road, so is that true? Well the goal, you often, in, in, in many cases you need secondary surgeries. Um, the kids are a little bit older to touch up their nose and lip. Um, That's more cosmetic. Yeah, more cosmetic. Um, but you, what we're right now that the techniques that we're using um, really are good, and um, a lot of the babies I've been doing now, um, I I would anticipate that they'll need very very little um, secondary surgery for cosmetic purposes as they grow older. And the palate to close, general rule, no, we're not getting yeah. specific, would be at what age? Uh, eight months of age is the best time to close the palate. And that, there's a couple of reasons why. Um, number one, um, you don't want to close it earlier um, because you, um, you'd like the baby, the baby's really not going to eat for a day or two after cleft palate surgery, so you'd like them to have a little bit of reserve um, where they can withstand a day or two of just IV fluids. The, so there's been a big emphasis to delay closure of the palate. Um, originally, um, say when I, 20, 30 years ago, the thinking was to wait till two and three years of age because um, when you close the palate, you may have some effects on the way the baby grows. However, the tendency is to push it as, to, as young as possible. Um, at eight months of age seems to be the ideal setting. The baby's still on a very liquidy diet, baby uh, soft foods. They don't have the dexterity to take a lot of things in their mouth, which could disrupt the surgery. They are in a very controllable stage, and the blood loss seems to be very minimal at that stage. The palate has, is still not very wide, and you can get an, an easy closure. If you wait longer, um, in theory, you, you may help the speech a little bit better. Um, I'm sorry, in theory, you may help the baby grow a little bit better, but you, you want that palate to be closed before the baby starts to The talk. feeding difficulties are minimized yeah. at that point. Yeah, the feeding difficulties. And the baby, if you think about it, the baby at eight months of age is going to start to develop. It, it, right at that cusp where they're going to start to say words. Baby's going to learn. Uh, you know, by a year of age, baby's going to know 20 words, mama, papa. Um, and they're going to they're going to be a little bit more animated, and so you'd like them to have an intact palate so they can speak well. Next logical time sequence would be for what? Well, the first two things are the cleft lip and the cleft palate. After that, you're surg you're you're in a surgical rest period. You don't need very much surgery. Um, so who you, would be involved in the next period? Yeah, you know, the um, the next period is speech. Um, Pediatric ENT, your nose and hearing, um, uh, and um, orthodontist and children's dentistry. Those things will be um, take over the, the role from the age of about two to about nine or ten. Because with the cleft, the teeth may not be in the right location. Right. The mm -hmm. secondary teeth may not be there. So there's going to be a lot of other problems to be contending with down the road. Is that correct? Correct. And, and the ENTs involved not just because of the palate, 
there could be something with the ears, or some other ear in his particular thing. Well, ENT is, plays a big role because the palate is connected to the eustachian tube, which is connected to the ear. And kids with cleft lips and cleft palates often have um, problems clearing the fluid out of their ear, so they don't hear well. Hear, they don't hear well because they have a lot of um, ear infections. So and chronic mineral infusion goes hand to hand in yeah. a lot of these cases. So you would like a, um, a ear, nose, and throat doctor um, and to work with. Um, the team because you want to make sure that um, their hearing is good and hearing tests need to be done every year on a baby with a cleft lip. And they're more li likely to end up with eustachian tubes than a, a, an average kid, is that correct? Yeah, there's a higher incidence of eustachian tubes and there's also um, a higher incidence of some speech uh, problems so you need to make sure that they're getting appropriate care um, and that they speak right.